y equals x squared is the most basic. Uh, so who's got a solution for y equals x squared? Let's throw it out there. Four equals two squared. Four equals two squared. Okay. Yeah. Um, anybody else have a solution? Three nines. Michael? Zero, zero. Zero, zero. Any others? How many others are there? What? As many as you want. An infinite number of solutions. What does it mean, a solution? Like I heard a three nine. What does that mean that three nine is a solution? Michael? When x is three, y is nine. When x is three, y is nine. Exactly. And if we were to uh, put three in there and nine in there, then the equation would be true. The word is true. Okay. Uh, both sides would be equal. All right. So, just a disclaimer here. What we're doing today, not the funnest thing to do, but it is uh, valuable in that uh, it, it encourages and strengthens and stretches our abilities to recognize patterns. And math is a lot about pattern recognition. Some would argue that it's all about pattern recognition. Right? That's all it is. Um, so we're going to do some of that today. Um, in a, in a way that, that we are asked to do, right? It's, it's just one of those things, it's those standards that we're supposed to meet, right? We're supposed to take uh, a function that's in an equation, turn it into a graph, and then see what happens to that graph, how uh, the graph of this guy right here, the basic one, the one we call the parent function, um, how it looks compared to the graph that this makes, and the graph that this makes, and the graph that this makes, all right? I hope that this is a, a, at least a little familiar from what we did with absolute values. And it's going to be similar to absolute values. And, uh, you know, this is going to be similar to absolute values. It's going to be similar to uh, you know, cubic functions. It's going to be similar to any other graph that we look at. Okay, when we do certain things, it has a similar effect on the graph. Right, so let's get to that. Uh, I'm going to put these side by side. So we can look at them and compare them. And uh, I'll work this and give ourselves as much room as possible and for each. Still talking about solutions here. And I'm once again going to try and uh, and then just like just crack open your little brains, your heads, and get direct access to your brains and get you to understand and, uh, well, understand, not just remember, understand that the connection between the solutions and the graph, right? The solutions to an equation and the graph of that equation. And, and really to say that there's a connection is kind of silly because the graph is the solutions, right? Or are the solutions. It's all the solutions that, a, a, that an equation can have at least as much as we can draw in, a, in whatever window we choose, okay? So the graph is a way to write the solutions, just like this is a way to write it. Actually, a graph is a way to draw the solutions. We're gonna write down the solutions right now, and then we'll translate it into a graph. And then we'll see, uh, we'll try to notice some patterns. Um, first, yeah. uh, but if we do negative two, negative one, these are nice, standard things to do with any graph yeah, or function. If you don't know how it behaves, you don't know how it looks, uh, you know, throw some negative numbers in there. Zero is a good one. Throw some positive numbers in there. See if that gives you an idea of what the graph looks like. Um, a lot of times it will. Sometimes it won't. Sometimes you have to put more points in. All right. So we put negative 2 into this function. Right? And this function squares that number. And what comes out? 4. Four. Negative 2 times negative 2, and a negative times a negative is positive 4. Negative 1 times negative 1, 1. 0 times 0, 1 times 1, 2 times 2. So let's talk about the domain and the range of this function. What's the domain? Again, what's the definition of the domain? The inputs. All of the inputs. Right? So 
all of the inputs, the things that you can put in, the things that can be x, or that x can be. Okay. What kind of numbers can we put in for x? Like all real numbers. All the real numbers. Okay. So all the real numbers. All of the real numbers. Now let's talk about the range. All of the outputs. Right? What kind of a range are we going to get out of this function? Somebody other than Michael. What's that? Positive. All positive, with one exception, and zero. zero. All positive and zero. Range, we can say it in lots of different ways. We can say y is greater than or equal to zero, which includes all the positives and zero. We can say uh, that it's all the real numbers that are positive and zero. You can choose to do it in a lot of different ways. So what we're noticing is that this function will never give us a negative number, always positive. Right? So that's one thing about squaring a number, it always comes out to be positive. It's either positive times positive or negative times negative. happens here. If we go on to the next function, this red one here, we put negative 2 in there. What's the first thing to do with, with negative 2? Square it. Isn't that what this function does? It's like all this function does. So this function does just that, and then something else. Right. So the first part of, the, of this function's output is just the output of this function. Does that make sense? just takes this function's output and then does something else to it. And if you notice, same here, right? You just take x squared and do something to it. Same here, it takes the output, does something else to it. Okay? That's uh, really the basis for most of these patterns that we're going to recognize today. There's first x squared, and then something happens to that. Something happens to that, out to that output. All right. So negative 2 goes in. First, it's going to be a 4. Then we're going to add 3 to that 4, get 7. Negative 1 is going to go in there. Well, the, the square part is just going to be 1. Right? That part's going to be 1. And we're going to add 3. It's going to be 4. So 0 goes in. We take 0, the square, and we add 3 to get 3. Right? 1 goes in. 1 is 1 squared. And we add 3. We get 4. 2 goes in. 4 is the square of 2. We add 3. We get 7. So all that's happening here, if we view this as uh, a factory, Number goes in to this function right here, the red one. And first it gets squared. That's the first thing you do to it. Okay. Then you take that, the result of that. That output comes out. And we add 3. And that's our final output on that graph, or that function, that whatever you want to call it. So it's just a, uh, a graphic representation, a picture, an analogy. Uh, for what's happening in this function. It's really taking this function, x squared, right? That's what this function would do. It would just take a number in, and it would square it, and it would be done. Number goes in, square it, comes out. Same thing here, only we also, additionally, we add 3. Um, let's start to look at those graphs. So this first one right here, um, negative 2 comma 4, negative 1 comma 1, uh, 1 comma 1, 0 comma 0, 2 comma 4. Right? That's what this graph looks like. Right? And if we kept going, we go 3, what would we get for 3? Put in 3, you get out 9, 3 comma 9. So uh, that's uh, what? Negative 3 would also give us positive 9. So if we think about previous graphs that we've had, uh, we've had lines, and we've had absolute values, which are just like kind of two lines. 
meeting at a V. Alright. This one's different though. Um, in those previous graphs, lines and absolute values, there is this move over one, go up one, or move over one, go up two, or uh, move up five, move over two, move up seven, move over three, right? Steady. From, from one point to the, to the next, it was a steady slope, okay? Now, this doesn't have a steady slope. If it had a slope, well, the slope would be changing, right? At one point, it, it seems to have one rate of change, go up. Uh, one and go over one. But the next one, go up three and go over one. The next one, go up five and go over one. And the next one, you see what I'm saying? You get the point. Go up, uh, what, we're at nine, 16. So it'll go up seven and go over one. So there's not the steady slope. If we were to think of it having a slope, the slope would be constantly changing depending on where we are on the graph. So we don't connect these with a nice straight line. This, this line, if we will, curves, right? curves up as the next point gets farther and farther away for that moving over of one. So here we have this other function. We've taken the output and added three. When we look on a graph, when we look on a graph with an x and a y axis, where do we see the output on that, on that graph? Where is the output uh, located or mapped to f? On the y. The y, right? In which direction is the y? Vertical. It's vertical. It's supposed to be horizontal. X is horizontal, right? OK. So here we can talk about the numbers, right? It takes the output. It takes that number, that output. This one does. takes the output of this function and adds 3 to it, right? And we just look at, look at the numbers. That means 4 plus 3 is 7. 1 plus 3 is 4. Look at the graph, the graph is a picture, okay? Uh, so on the picture, if we take uh, this point, okay, what's the output that's associated with this point right here? This point right here is one, one. What's the output of that? It's associated with that point. One, right, the second one is a one, okay? We're gonna add three to that, that's gonna put it at not one, one, but one, three, or three, so we're gonna go up to four. So the output of that point is changed from one instead of one is three. How about here? What's the output for this point? Zero, zero. Well, zero is the input. The first zero is the input. The second zero is the output, right? So zero is the output. If we add three to that output, and output is represented vertically on the y-axis, we go up three, one, two, three. There we go. This one, we add three, we go uh, there. One, two, three, we go there. So overall. When we add 3 to the x squared function, what effects does that have on the graph? It moves it up 3, right? Every point moves up 3. All the outputs get 3 bigger. And when we represent that in a picture on the graph, in the way that we've uh, agreed to draw graphs, it moves it up 3. Okay. So this guy has the effect of moving the whole graph up 3. What if I wanted to move it down 6 instead of up 3? Minus 6. Is this sounding familiar? Yep. Just like absolute value. Okay. If, if you're an expert at absolute value, you feel like you can handle every single uh, thing that I can throw at you with just vertical shifts and horizontal shifts and uh, steepness and all that kind of stuff, then great. Um, but if not, if you're not an expert, if you're not perfect, if you don't get it right every time, without fail. Um, maybe pay attention to this. We're going to re-derive all of these uh, graphical changes and, uh, and get another shot at it. All right. So if that was all, if that absolute value stuff was confusing, we're going to get another chance to see those same patterns come out. But similar to the absolute value, if we, if we do the function first, right? if we square the number first and then add 3, it shifts the graph of x squared up 3. This is the same graph only three above this graph, right? Similar to the absolute value. If this were absolute value, and this were absolute value, this would look the same as that, only it would be three up. Okay, now let's look at this uh, orange guy, the outputs of this orange function. So negative two goes in, first it gets squared, right? We kind of always are gonna square the number first, at least for a while. 
So we square the number first. We square this number first, and we get 4. Then we multiply it by 4, and we get 16. To use our analogy, a little picture here. First we square the number. First we square the number. Whatever happens there after it gets squared comes out. And we say so we put parentheses 4 to represent that we multiply the result by 4. So again, we have this function, this function right here, is like a part of this function, it's like inside that function. Okay. So first it gets squared, so, so we can just look at the outputs of this and take those outputs and just multiply them before. That's by four, that's exactly what's happening. So we take one and multiply it by four, take the output, uh, zero squared is zero, we multiply that by four, we get zero. Uh, 1 squared is 1, multiply 1 by 4, we get 4. 2 squared is 4, multiply that by 4, we get 16. Now look at the graph. Remember the graph is just a, a picture of all the solutions. So we to draw the solutions rather than writing them down, writing the numbers down. And again, uh, we go through for the, the x squared function. 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, you want to go to 3, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 4, uh, there's 4 right there, negative 3, 9, and there's our y equals x squared function. This orange one, it'll be a little bit different. It takes every output of x squared that x squared has, it has all those same outputs, but then it takes those outputs, and what does it do with it? Multiplies it by 4. It takes every output that x squared has and multiplies it by 4. Well, let's see what that looks like on the graph. Well, we get, uh, let's start at 0. 0, in, 0, out. It's different from this function. 0 in and in 3 came out because we added to it. But since we're just multiplying 0 by 4, it still is 0. So this point hasn't gone anywhere. Right. That point, what do we call that point down there? Vertex. Vertex. Good. Uh, if you knew that, great. If you guessed, great as well. Uh, using what you know, applying it to a new situation. Okay, so come over here and we go to 1, positive 1, say. 1 goes in and 4 comes out. So at the same place that x squared goes 1, 1, 4x squared goes 1, 4. It's all the way up there. Okay, so we go over to 2, instead of 2, 4. Right, to 4, we take that 4, that output, and we multiply it by 4, we go all the way up to 16. So, I have to put lots of uh, more tick marks, and we're all the way up to 16. And we don't have room for what happens at 3. What would we get at 3? Three? 3 what? 3. 336. 3, 36. All right, so negative 1, we're going to get the same thing. Negative 2, we're at 16. And this is a graph of or x squared. It goes on forever like that. You think you get a similar kind of effect if we did 2x squared? It would be less, right, less exaggerated. Uh, same effect for 3x squared, 5x squared, right? If we did 2, 3, 5, 7.3, right, times x squared, what effect is that having on the graph? Narrow, it's true, it looks narrow, or narrow would be a fair description. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick, stick to that word that I talked about before, that word steepness. Ste yeah. Well, it's more steep. The orange one's more oh, steep, right. right, than the blue one. So the, the orange one's more steep, it's steeper, okay? This idea of steepness gets us thinking about like the angle that the, that the graph is at, okay? And, and for a curve, it's hard to imagine like, you know, what, what angle is a curve? It's not straight. Angles, you need two straight things, right? That idea of that angle, that, that slope of the graph, of a curvy thing, that's, that's for a few years from now, a couple years from now, so we won't exactly worry about it. But if I use the word steepness now, then I'm, I'm just like molding your minds for the future if you ever decide to take calculus, okay? Um, so that's an idea that we use there. So we're going to go with steepness. It's, it's more steep. And also, when we say narrow, a lot of times um, students have this picture of a graph as like this, this fixed 
shape, this finite thing that doesn't go on forever, right? That this, these arrowheads, they don't really like project them out in their minds, okay? So they get the idea that we just take this small shape and we squish it in and somehow like the graph is smaller and like if you think about it, if, if, you're, uh, if you're imagining it that way, sometimes you could mistakenly think now the domain has shrunk, right? Fewer x's go into this thing. But it doesn't take up less space. It still goes forever for infinity in this direction. It goes for infinity in that direction. Right? It just goes up more than it goes over. Um, so what kind of numbers are we going to use right here that are going to make it more steep? Positive numbers. Negative has a little bit of a different effect, right? Um, if I want my graph to be steeper than this blue graph, the reason it's steeper is because we take that output and we make it larger by a factor, factor of four, or a factor of three, or a factor of two. Okay, that's why it's steeper. So if I want it to be steeper, what kind of a number am I going to use out here? What are we going to multiply by? Bigger than what? Bigger than four? What about three? I just want steeper than the blue one, not steeper than the orange one. Bigger than the one? Bigger than one, right? There is a one right here. This is one in front of this x squared, right? One times x squared. If we want something that's bigger than x squared, we just multiply it by something that's bigger than one, right? Multiply it by 1.0001. It'll make it bigger than x squared. And therefore, every input will be a little bit bigger than these inputs, and it'll be steeper. What about if I want it to be less steep? Less than one. Okay. Let's say between zero and one, right? So that we don't worry about the negative part yet. One half, right? Be half as steep. One third be a third as steep. Three fourths, three fourths as steep. Seven eighths, seven eighths as steep as x squared. So this guy's affecting the steepness. If it's bigger than one, it's steeper. If it's between zero and one, it's not as steep. It's less steep. Less steep than x squared. And we come over here, this function, very similar to x squared. First, x gets squared. Then whatever that is comes out of the x squared factory. And we multiply it by negative one. And then it comes out. So this, this function is almost identical to this function, except for every output will be what? Negative. It'll be negative. It'll just be the opposite right, of that thing. So negative 2 goes in, 4 comes out of there, we multiply by negative, we get negative 4. Negative 1 goes in, negative 1 comes out. 0 goes in, 0 comes out. Negative 1, negative 4. If we were down to 3, 3 would go in, and negative 9 would come out. So remember, we're changing the, the outputs. The outputs are now the opposite of what they used to be when we compare it to x squared. So how's that going to affect the graph when we compare it to x squared? Michael? Because if you flip it. When you flip it, right? Remember that from absolute value? If you put a negative in front of an absolute value, it flips that V upside down. Similarly, uh, if we're making every output the exact opposite of itself, then instead of going to 1, 1, we go to 1, the opposite of 1. Uh, we go to negative 1. Instead of 2, 4, we go to 2, negative 4, the opposite of 4. Right? Instead of negative 1, 1, we go negative 1, negative 1. Negative 2, negative 4. Every output is made the opposite of itself in this negative x squared function. And so we flip it right over. We've got moving up or moving down. We got this guy is all about the steepness of the graph. And a negative in front is going to flip it over. It's going to flip it vertically, right? Vertically because there's a negative in front of the output. Right? This is the output of the function. x squared is the output, and then we make it negative, so the output is the opposite. 
have f of x equals maybe a negative times something times x squared, maybe plus some other number. How are we doing here? We're just putting them all together, right? All possibilities in one function. So when we look at it, hopefully what's happened is we're getting it. I get why adding a 3 to x squared would move the graph up 3. I get why multiplying x squared by 4 would cause it to be steeper than x squared. I get why putting a negative in front of it would flip it over the x-axis or, or make all the positives into negatives. I get that. So then when we put it all together, we know how to uh, interpret the whole situation. So when we talk about it's moving up, it's moving down, it's getting steeper, it's flipping upside down, we're comparing it to the x squared function. So compared to the x squared function, if we, just, if we add a number on, what effect is that going to have on the graph? If we take x squared and do what to it? It would be what? Starts that much more up or down if k is negative, right? Um, yeah, it just kind of affects where it starts. It doesn't change the shape of it at all. The same as the shape is exactly the same. We can take x squared and put it right on top of this one, and it would lay it perfectly on top of that one. It's just that it shifts up or down depending on whether k is positive or negative. Let's get, if we multiply x squared by a, by a number, what's that going to affect? The steepness. It's going to affect the steepness. Okay. And last thing, right, I, I, I pull apart these two things. I, I, I say a is a number, and we'll consider a to be positive, right, and there might be a negative in front of it. because. The magnitude of A determines the steepness, right? It might be more steep if it's bigger than 1, less steep if it's between 0 and 1. Um, but if there's a negative in front of it, the negative has its completely its own effect on the graph, right? And what is that negative, uh, what effect does that negative have on the graph? It makes all the points opposite. makes all the points opposite, and it would be opposite in the vertical direction, so flipping it over vertically. So when we say shifts up and down, and it changes the steepness, and it flips it vertically, we're talking about it starts with that x squared shape, right? That shape that starts at 0, 0. That should be 0, 0. Goes, there's a 1, 1, and a 2, 4. Negative 1, 1, negative 2, 4, 3, 9, negative 3, 9. Takes this shape, and that's the shape that we're talking about, moving it, moving it up and down, moving it left and right maybe at some point, steepness, flipping it, okay? So if you start with that shape and you start flipping it around and moving it up and down, all that kind of stuff, that's what we're talking about. So we're in the 4.1. Let's, uh, let's just deal with like two of the things at first, and I'll deal with a third. What will this do to the graph? Down. Moves it down two, okay? Uh, the vertex is a really useful point when we're talking about a lot of this stuff, especially shifting it left and right, and up and down. Left, right, up and down. If we move first the vertex, then we can find all the other points in reference to the vertex. So 
So the vertex would be right there at zero, zero, right? If, if nothing else uh, happened to it, the vertex would stay right there. But it does move down two. So move it down one, two. And really, all the other points are moving down two as well. But if we move the vertex, that'll help us like get our bearings and know where everything else should be. Okay, so there's the vertex at negative two. And now let's look at this negative, just the negative. What does the negative do to the graph? Flips it upside down, right? It's gonna flip it over its vertex, right? You move the vertex and then instead of it opening up from the vertex, it'll open down. From the vertex. Well, we're ignoring the one fifth for just a second. If if we didn't have the one fifth, now all we would have to do is flip it upside down, right? So if we flip it upside down, uh, we know that we would go uh, one and then down one, right? That would be the opposite. Uh, when you, you go two over here, you go up four, but it's opposite, it's upside down, so we'll go down four, two, three, four. Right there. Where'd you get the four from? Just, just in numbers. Oh, okay. Yeah, it just, just our prior knowledge that if we put two into the x squared function, we go, if we go over two from the vertex, we'll go up four from there. But since it's negative, then we go down four from the vertex. Over two, down four. Same thing over here. It's it's a symmetrical graph, isn't it? One side looks exactly like the other side. You can fold it in half, and one side would lay right down on top of the other side. Um, so there we go. All right. That's that's what it would look like if it was just if it was just what 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 equation would make this graph? Minus x squared, minus two. It's only moved down two, and it's only flipped upside down. So then we multiply by one fifth. Right? And we remember that one fifth. This is number that's less than one. It's going to make it less steep. Right? Um, use green. Instead of over one and down one, it would be over one, not down one, but one fifth of that. Right? One fifth of one, which is one fifth. Come over to two, and we go down not four, but one fifth of four. What's one fifth of four? What's a fifth of four? Fifth of four is fifth times four. Four fifths. Just four fifths. Okay. Four fifths. So that's not even uh, that's not even to one yet. Not even down one from the vertex. It's really not very steep. It's really less steep. If we came over to three, that would that would be for this guy would be three and down nine over three and down nine from there. But it won't be down nine. It'll be down a fifth of nine. That'd be nine fifths. So nine fifths. That's almost two, but not quite. Is that, is that good? You good on that? That seem to make sense? No? Let's do another one.
Okay, has anybody got to where they feel like, good, I've got it, I've got a graph that's looking nice. Anybody? Right, okay, so what'd you do first? I uh, moved my vertex down five. Okay, great, let's do that. One, two, three, four, five, moving it. <laughs> Put a little point right there, that's where the vertex is, okay? Then what? Um, I moved up three-fourths of one. Three fourths of one, okay, about right there. And yeah, and then over one. And then over one. Yeah. Because typically you go up one and over one, so you go up three fourths and over one. Okay, what did you do there after that? I went up three fourths again and over two. Up three fourths again and over two and over well a total of two, even, right? Yeah. All right. If we keep moving up three fourths and over one, up three fourths over one, up three fourths over one, up three fourths over one. We'll just make a line, right? That's how lines work. If you remember with the, this shape, we call it a parabola, you go up a little bit more every time, right? You're gonna go up three fourths, and then we'll go up more, and then we'll go up more, and then we'll, like it gets bigger, right? The y value gets bigger, faster and faster and faster, right? So we don't just add on a three fourths every time you move over one. Um, but the same thing that we, we uh, same idea we used here. We go up three fourths because normally we go over one and up one, right? Because the, the normal x squared function, uh, if if this is our vertex and we're imagining we're, we're actually up here, right? We put in one and we get out one, right? Put in one, get out one. We put in two, what do we get out? Four, 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 right? We get out four. So let's see what would actually happen. Like the, up here, we get one, one, right? Zero, zero, one, one, two, uh, four. Well, if we multiply 1 by 3 fourths, now the output is 3 fourths, right, instead of 1. If we multiply 4 by 3 fourths, what do we get? 3, right? Fourths cancel and we're left with 3. Right? Every output, every y value is going to be 3 fourths as high as the output of x squared. Right? Every y value of, of, of this function will be 3 fourths of the output of x squared. So we don't just move up another three fourths, we move up a lot of fourths. We move up uh, eight fourths, nine fourths. Right. Go up nine fourths from there. Um, so that's gonna put us at three above our vertex. Um, we could connect those points, we could make a mirror image of that over here. Uh, move over negative one, negative two. Draw ourselves a little graph there. You know, that's good enough. Right. So that three fourths, it's not just the slope. You know, it's not just up three fourths and over one. It's not up three and over four, which would be the exact same thing. Um, we can't consider it that way. We can't consider that number to be the slope. Because think about it. If I pick two points on this graph, say the slope from here to there is whatever, right? The slope from here to there is different. It's bigger. And then if we go from here to another point that's one away, it's going to be bigger, and the slope will get, keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger between each uh, you know, new set of two points. Mm -hmm. So it's not that this is the slope, it's that this is making every output, right? This is the output, we square something, and we multiply by three fourths, it's making it three fourths as big as it used to be. So where this original parabola would go uh, one, one, and two, four, and three, nine, this one goes one and three fourths, three fourths of that. Uh, one and three, three fourths of four. One and nine fourths, or uh, not nine fourths, but uh, 27 fourths. Okay. Away from the vertex, that is, in reference to the vertex. Get all the y's and then do then to move them. Well, then just like plot them, like we were doing, like the. Oh, um, I think that um, yeah, for a while that would be helpful, but also um, 
you know, try and roll that into, um, you know, if I, if I just shift this around, I know that the shape of a normal parabola would be to go over one and up one, to go over two and up four, go over three and up to nine, right? And then uh, if it's multiplied by three fourths, go up three fourths of whatever that output is. Um, if you just plot points, you just put an X and get Y, get X and get Y, um, that'll, that'll get it, but you're gonna be missing this input-output idea, which is the one that I really want you to get. Right. One function put, you know, gets, one, uh, gets a number in, and this is the output. This function is really similar. It gets a similar output, only its output is 3 fourths of what the other output was. Or it's 3 fourths of what that other output was, and then 5 less than that. I want you to see that, that, that step change. Right? So that one function has x squared, the other function is 4 times bigger than that, the other function is 5 less than that, the other function is you know, uh, the opposite of those outputs. So I, I get the whole, I get the very beginning, uh -huh. like the move the vertex down, but after that I'm completely lost. Okay. <laughs> By just, uh, no. Let's come over here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this right here is x squared, mm -hmm. right? That's, uh, that is the original function, the parent function, x squared. Okay. This is the output of that function. Then we're going to change that output by multiplying it by 3, 4, subtracting 5, whatever. Okay. To, to help us see it differently, maybe, let's, uh, let's do the order of operation. Let's do these changes in the order that they would happen. Right? First, we would square the number, then we would multiply, and last, we would subtract. Okay. So first, let's draw the x squared function. y equals x squared. Put in 1, get out 1. Put in 2, get out 4. Put in 3, get out 9. And you know, four gives sixteen, five gives out twenty-five, and on it goes. And four, and negative three, and nine. Right. That's y equals x squared. Nothing's happened to it. Okay, it has um, one, one input one, get out one input two, get out four input three, get out nine. Um, so first, let's look at 3 fourths times x squared. 3 fourths times x squared. Well, this is x squared, right? There, that is x squared. That's 1 squared. That's 2 squared. That's 3 squared. Right? That is the output. That is x squared. That is the thing we're multiplying by 3 fourths. So you multiply 1 by 3 fourths, and you get 3 fourths. You multiply 4 by 3 fourths, you get 3. 3 fourths times 4 over 1, fourths cancel, you get 3. So we multiply 4 by 3 fourths and we get 3. Multiply 9 by 3 fourths, you're going to get 27 over 4. Okay, so um, so uh, 6 and a fourth, 26 and 3 fourths. And whatever other output we go to, right, if we went to 16, we'd multiply that by uh, 3 fourths, and we'd get 12. We'd go up to 12 uh, rather than 16. So this, this function that we're now uh, going to connect the dots for, this green one, it's, uh, it's close, but it's just not as steep. It's 3 fourths as steep. Now, 3 fourths is close to 1. It's close to the, the, the original, but it's not as steep. Uh, mirror image right there, and we just connect those points. Okay. So, so far, does that make sense? We're multiplying every output by three fourths. Yes. Okay. If you're having trouble with it, this is the, the point where it's really down to you to, to practice it. Try something like that over and over. Make up a new problem. Make up, you know, seven eighths x squared or one third x squared. Or you know, try that over and over and see. Oh, I, I get it. Okay, the output is is now lower. Or if you multiply it by five, it's five times as high. 
So now we've multiplied every output by 3 fourths, and that's how we arrive here. Okay. Now we're going to take that output and we're going to subtract 5 from it. That's the next thing that we do, subtract 5 from every output. Right? If I subtract 5 from this output, what's the output here at this point? What's the output at this point right here? Zero. What's the output at this point right here? This one right here? Right here, this green one. Not that one, but this one. 175, 3 fourths. This one right here, the output is? Three, right? So if I subtract five from zero, going down to negative five. This point would go down to uh, negative four and a fourth, so go down to negative two, right? All these outputs would be five less than they were. So let's uh, make some tick marks here. All of these points are going to shift down five. These ones too shift down five. They're going to be worth five less than they were before. before. So I should shift down to five. to uh, another kind of a, a shift, another kind of a, a change that can happen to the graph. That's going to be, for example, before we square anything, before that happens, we're going to subtract three. Yeah? What is your I2? It just got real close to the thing. <laughs> We're going to have to wait until that day when that becomes relevant. That's what I, that's what I have to do. Read, read the other one before. I can read the other one and yeah. figure it out sometime. Because it's like, it's like it's squared and that one's... Let's go read the other one. I get it. I, I understand it. Sure you don't. Yes, I do. <laughs> oh. All right, let's look at this graph here, the graph that this function would make, this equation would make, okay? It's going to be a, a parabola, but how does it compare to the x squared? That's what I want you to see. And, and if you don't have any idea, just plug in some points and see what happens. That's cool. Uh, just plug in some points and see what happens. See what the graph looks like, see what it looks like compared to x squared. Okay. 